the 2020 uh, NBA draft is officially in the books and it did not disappoint. A total of seven players, two born in Nigeria, were available for pickups by some of the best basketball teams in the world. And it was pleasing to see that they made it big this time around. Well, the Nigerian players are Precious Achua, Udoka Azubike, um, there's also Isaac Okoro, Onyeka Okongu, Zeke Naji, Daniel Uturu, and uh, Jordan Nwara, the son of Alex Nwara, the former coach of the Tigers. Well, I've got Femi Adefeso, a basketball expert, joining us this morning to talk about this, and I'm sure he's as excited as I am. Uh, good to have you with us, Femi. Good to be on the show with you this morning, Luke. I'm, I'm very excited yeah. about what, what really happened last night. Initially, we thought we were seven players. Yeah. Up until we got a revelation uh, during the draft by one of the players that his dad is actually Nigerian. Mm, that, sure. That's uh, Desmond. Uh, and um, he, he, was, he was Desmond Bay, and he was picked here to Boro by the Boston Celtics. But Boro, sure. I think it's a good time to be a Nigerian generally. Mm. Well, from a sporting perspective, that is. Um, when you look at basketball and what, what happened last night. Very true. Now, before we get deep into the players now, what does this mean for Nigeria and, of course, the national team? Okay, for Nigeria, I'll separate both. Um, for Nigeria, it means more attention uh, to talents on the continent. Mm -hmm. It means um, teams, universities would begin to look at um, scouting opportunities out here. Mm -hmm. particularly with what um, these players, you know, have been able to do while they were yeah. in college to get themselves. Yeah, I mean, Precious Action White, as a freshman, was the conference player um, of the year um, mm -hmm. in his school. And um, same thing um, if, you know, for, you know, the likes of um, Okungu, uh, as well, who dominated their conference. So, so you look at it, you would see more attention to talents from here. From a national team perspective, I mean, now, we, we are going to be able to attract all the best talents possible because now almost all these guys are a little closer at home. Yeah. They are Nigerian. They are, some of them are born here. Some both parents are, Ni are, are Nigerian. Yeah. So it's easier for them to, you know, decide to, I'm going to play for the Jay Tigers, mm -hmm. not wait for maybe a US call-up or Canada or something like that. So uh, you look at that and you say it's, it's a win um, on that, on both ends, uh, really. True. And it feels like Precious Achua was like, um, more like the biggest of, of all the picks, I, I stand to be corrected. Well, no, he was actually picked 22nd uh, by the Denver Nuggets um, in the draft uh, night. But, but I, I think the, the, the top was um, Isaac Okoro, uh, okay. who, was, who was picked fifth overall, if I'm not mistaken, by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes, fifth overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Then um, Oyeka Okongu was picked sixth um, overall by the Atlanta Hawks mm. as well. Uh, I think Precious came later on. I think there was also um, I think there was um, there was also a Zeke Naji um, as well in the, uh, before jo Jordan was, was picked later on as well. So you look at it I mean it's all around all around um, good news uh, regardless of who was picked and where you were picked. Let's not forget that you know, some of these guys, especially those picked in the second round, they are not guaranteed contracts. People like Jordan Mora that are seen on the screen. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at the teams that picked them, I think that's what is most exciting. For yeah. example, Udoka, um, as we keep, was picked by the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets is a big team. Yeah. And they have perhaps the most versatile center in the entire NBA, in Nikola Jekic. So just imagine the growth potential of somebody who scouting process, he doesn't do more than himself, he's very, his work ethic is great, you know, he's very focused. And so you can imagine just how much of the upside it is to be in a team, you know, like a nugget. And uh, so you look at that and you want to say, I think it's good, uh, good for him, good for um, his career. Same thing for Jordan Nwara. Yeah. I think the Milwaukee Bucks needs shooting. In, and he's a natural shooter. During the combine, he was a leading three-point scorer. Uh, last year, I know where I'm going to yeah. be working that uh, they have um, Yanis who always runs to the basket and then they just acquired Jurali Day as well mm. uh, to join them as a true point guard. So you look at that all together, you say um, these guys are lucky to be on very good teams. Maybe uh, you might not want to fancy Atlanta Hawks or the Cleveland Cavaliers at this moment. But you've seen superstars go into teams and change the face of their franchises. Yeah. Nobody knew Chicago Bulls before Michael Jordan came. True. Couple and Cavaliers were also on the radar before LeBron James. Uh -huh. So who says these names can be the ones that would um, change things and write 
history um, in the books of these franchises and the NBA at large. True. Now, th these players, not all of them are playing for Nigeria, talking about the Tigers. Do you think that these players combined will someday play for the national team of Nigeria? I think it's, it's going to be le a lot less um, difficult to have them play for Nigeria. Okay. Like I, I mentioned, I think about three of them um, have both parents as Nigerians. I think Uyeka Ogungu, um, I don't want to mix things up. Uh, I know two were born in Nigeria. Um, Udoka Azubike was born in Nigeria. Precious was born in Nigeria. We have three of them that have both of their parents as Nigerians. Uh, so, so imagine easily, they might probably come be those who have visited home a few times um, you know, during the holidays, especially Christmas holidays, where people like to travel back home. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't rule that out. Uh, so I, I really don't see a, a distance, unlike in the past, where you know all these guys become superstars and it's difficult to casual them because they probably have their affiliations to other nations, where they were born, or because they have half parentage from those nations. And so it's, it's very interesting to see where all these guys will pitch their tent. I think this, the D Tigers is, is very attractive at the moment. Let's not forget, we are qualified for the Olympics. That's the dream of virtually every athlete in the world, regardless of sports, we yeah. are the Olympic Games. Um, you have superstars already established. Josh Okuki, you know, starting by was doing great. Chimizim Nitu with the San Antonio Sports already doing great. Uh, not forgetting veterans like Alfaru Camino, who is with the Orlando Magic as well. So you look at that, that's enough attraction going by three straight olympic games that we've qualified for did well at the world cup and afro basket back-to-back -back finals winning one and losing one so i i really don't think it's going to be very difficult to scout these guys to eventually represent nigeria mm, true when you know, it's time a, a lot of people have actually asked this question uh, about these picks uh, concerning the nba draft um, most people believe that this is done it's done and dusted does this mean that they are going to feature for the teams that they have been drafted into? Is it sealed and delivered yet? It's, it's, not, it's not sealed, um, particularly for those that were drafted outside of the first round. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the first 30 look more or less home and dry as it were. Uh, although some of them will play the summer league, but I don't know, because of COVID-19, a lot of things will change. And of course, we already know the new calendar is out, December yeah. 22nd the new season will start. So they may not have the luxury of that summer league. But not everybody will have their contracts all signed up uh, because the draft also has regulations. So from the second half of the draft, which is from 30th pick to 60th pick, um, there will be different kinds of negotiations. However, those guaranteed contracts, I think the first rounders, where um, they will go on to sign, they will get four years um, usually. And then there's a player option. They call it the player option. Mm. I mean, the third year where a team can decide to resign you for the last year or put you up as a restricted free agent and um, you could end up going to other things. So it's not as sealed and delivered for a lot of these guys. But at least they know that these teams have their rights and they can still even use them as trading chips yeah. uh, to get um, other players. I, I remember very well, um, just in recent past, um, 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 and Andrew Wiggins, yes, Andrew Wiggins, who was drafted number one overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers, if you remember, they used him as a trade just before he signed his contract um, to get um, John, um, Kevin Love yeah. uh, from the Minnesota Timberwolves to move uh, to the Cleveland Cavaliers um, in, the, in that deal. So it's, it's not all said and done that they will be playing for these teams already, oh. but at least they know they've gotten one leg into the door which is the dream of every player in the world. True. I'm talking about dream of every player in the world. Let's bring it back home now and talk about the future of Nigeria and, of course, the local players. Because it seems like there's something being done right over there. But here, back home, our league is not even running. So what hope, what future do these guys have playing in a league that doesn't run? And of course, they don't stand a chance to feature in the national team. Because I asked the former coach some time ago, Alex Nwara, um, saying, uh, is it possible for him to pick um, the home base players? And he said, where are the home base players? What are they doing? What is the training process? Where is the league that they are going to feature in? So is that dream dead for the home base players to play for the Tigers of Nigeria? Sad to say, but that's the truth. Um, it, it is there. You haven't played active basketball in three years. Yeah. Um, the question behoves, I mean, what criteria would we use 
to pick you up if we have to pick you. Oh. Um, because at the end of the day, what matters most is is that I mean, you must be competitively um, alert. Yeah. Uh, you, you must be fit. You must be able to the weight training camp. You must be able to compete yeah. for a place on the team because you are own base or because you are Nigerian it doesn't automatically you know give you the express way to mm -hmm. walk through. I'm sorry to say that I'm an advocate for local base players being on the national team, but it's the truth. Um, so, the, it, it goes back to the federation, really. Yeah. What are they doing? Um, why is the league not running? Um, why, you know, why have we waited for so long? Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, the national team will do what the national team will do, yeah. which is put the basketball program you know, on the front burner, in the eyes of people. Mm -hmm. Give us PR, give us love, attract sponsorship. But this sponsorship should be channeled to something, which is the local league. Because the truth is, yes, I mean, we can't get the Nigeria Basketball League to be as great as the NBA. Yeah. I mean, we'll be honest with it. It's like saying we want to get, you know, any league in Africa to compete with the EPL or the Spanish Liga. It's almost impossible. Uh, but we can get it to a level where these guys can compete. That's, that's, that's the key word there. They can compete and they can open themselves up to opportunities. Just look at how good the story of Precious Atunwa is oh, and Budoka, though they were um, young academic hours when they left. Yeah. Imagine a player from Lagos Islanders or Totan Warriors, you know, getting drafted, even if not getting drafted, even as a free agent, getting into the league. Uh, th that would not only bring spotlight to the league, it also even bring investments because they will pay some kinds of compensations to these teams, help them improve and all of that. So a, a lot needs to be done. And for the national team and non-base players, I'm really sorry, but the truth is, if the administrators don't do better, then they will keep limiting their chances and probably will never have a shot, you know, mm -hmm. at wearing that green white jersey. Wow, quite quite sad. And uh, well, uh, I'd like to thank you, Femi. Um, in as much as you talk basketball, I was hoping that you would also be there, um, being picked, uh, being drafted into probably the Miami Heat or the Golden State Warriors, but here we are talking about the players that we no, want. I can, still be, I can still be picked as their uh, media know, officer, PR, um, manager. Oh yeah, or, you know, <laughs> uh, any other stuff. So mm. the dream is not dead yet. Okay. No. So you, you, you won't be playing, you'll be talking basketball. It's fine. It's fine. Right. But as always, right. thank you very much, Femi Adefesa, for joining us this morning. It was great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. A pleasure doing this with you, Doka. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much once again.